Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to this special children's TV edition of Pointless Celebrities. This is the show where all the questions have been asked to 100 people before the show. All our celebrities have to do is come up with the answers those 100 people couldn't think of. Let's meet today's Pointless Celebrities. <laughs> and couple number one. Sarah Green, formerly of Blue Peter, Saturday Superstore, and Going Live. And John Craven, uh, you've got to be over 30 to remember me on children's television. Uh, <laughs> uh, John Craven's Deers Round, uh, Multicolor Swap Shop, uh, Saturday Superstore together, yeah. didn't we? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And Blue Peter. And Blue Peter. Yeah, now came again. to Japan with us. Yeah, yeah I did, yeah. Hey! <laughs> Couple number two. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm uh, Richard Holian, and I played Johnny in the 80s TV series Johnny Briggs. <laughs> and I am Sue Devaney. I played Rita Briggs, Johnny's very bossy sister, and uh, we were very big in the 80s, weren't well. we? <laughs> Not as big as John and Sarah, <laughs> but we were quite big. <laughs> <laughs> Cover number three. We are Dick and Dom. I'm Dick, that's Dom. And we are best known for being Dick and Dom. Finally, couple number four. I am Kerry Bernal, presenter of CBBS and children's author, and this is my friend Ben, who you might not recognise without his hat. Uh, my name's Ben Folks. I'm a writer and an actor, best known for playing Mr Bloom on CBBS. <laughs> Thank you very much to all of you. Very warm welcome. It's lovely to have you all here. We'll get a chance to chat to each of you throughout the show, of course, as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. I didn't have time to find a new co-host, so here is one I made earlier. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Good evening to you. Good evening. What a lovely lineup. I like the fact that everyone at home will be squealing at different parts of the podiums as they go along. Yeah. The different ages of, uh, of children's television. Uh, it should be an absolute cracker. The first question today is a lovely one. Oh. Really nice and nice for everybody, I hope. And also, in our head to head, we've got my favourite uh, pointless category title of all time. You have to get through to the head to head to see what it is, though. So, a lot of people are not going to see it. I hope I make it. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Brilliant. That would be nice. Be helpful. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Well, as usual, all of today's questions have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here are on the lookout for those all-important pointless answers. These are answers that none of our 100 people found. Find one of those and we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, as today's show is a celebrity special, all of our celebrities are playing for a nominated charity. Therefore, we are going to start off with a jackpot of £2,500. There we are. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready... Let's play Pointless. Now, there's only one thing you have to remember, and it is this, the rule of Pointless. The pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this evening is... Fictional characters. Fictional characters. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and our question concerns... ...alliterative fictional characters. Alliterative fictional characters, Richard. Yeah, we're about to show you a board of 16 characters, all of whom have two word names, and both those names start with the same letter. Alliterative. Uh, just give us the most obscure answer you can, please. Thank you very much. So, as Richard said, we're going to put a board up with 16 characters on it. That will stay up for the whole round. We won't be changing that halfway through the round. Shall we have a look at that image? Here it comes. There we are. 16 characters, all of whom have alliterative names. Their first and their second names both begin with the same letter. John, welcome back to Pointless. Well, yeah. Lovely, as <laughs> ever, to have you here. Um, news round, I suppose, was such a, is such a huge part of the television landscape. What was there before news round? Was there a news round? There was round? nothing. Just there was a nothing. sort of little gap in the schedules, I think. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of some crevasse, yeah. exactly. Um, at first, quite a few people thought, there was no place for news in children's television. Yeah. So we had to win those people over. Um, and what is amazing to me now is that, you know, I, people come up to me in the street, um, people who, you know, are middle-aged now, and say, oh, 
thank you for getting me interested in the news when but I was it, little. Absolutely yeah. right. I mean, it was brilliant. It was, it was so... It was you know, five minutes long or something. Yeah, so five, it was six minutes. nothing too scary in terms of, you know, then children, actually... Like, I remember we used to love watching music. Yeah. Right? Still there today. Still there today. Mm. Same yeah. music. So, almost much. the same almost music. Almost exactly the yeah. same, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, John, what about our board of characters here? Not all that good on cartoon characters. Uh, maybe is the one at the far end, is that Daffy Duck? Daffy Duck. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Daffy Duck. It is right. 65. Oh, yeah. Daffy Duck. Not very good, though. Yeah, Daffy Duck on the second row there, uh, on the right. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Sue, welcome to Pointless. It's Hello lovely to there. have you here. <laughs> now, you left school at 14 to I did. go into acting. Yes, I did. I, my first job was with Thora Heard in Loving Memory. Yeah. And then I went into Coronation Street when I was 16. Exactly, so straight in. I mean, it worked. It, you know, you so just went far, running so good. in. Yeah, and I'm still doing. <laughs> acting embraced you. I'm still here. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And I gather you and Richard have just met today for the oh first my gosh, time in. I can't believe it. I recognise him. He walked down the corridor and I recognised those ears because right. <laughs> 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 are, he's gorgeous, but we haven't seen each other for 30 years. It's true, isn't wow. it? It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while, but we kind of all became friends again on Facebook, so we're thinking of having a Johnny Briggs reunion at some point. Yeah. Oh, how long did Johnny Briggs run for? We did two series, but yeah. they showed it every year for the next 15 years. So, oh, is that it? Yeah. Was it only two series? Yeah. Like Faulty Towers? Like Faulty Towers, There we yeah. are. Goodness. Uh, now, Sue, our alliterative characters right, OK, here. yes, I've got Who to concentrate like to go now. For? So, I'm going for... Mm. Uh, Betty Boop. Betty Boop. Yeah. OK, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Betty Boop. It's right. 65 is our only score Ooh. at this point. You pass that 55 for Betty Booth. Very good. Yeah, good answer, Sue. Very well played. Uh, top left there. Now, the animator who drew Betty Booth originally drew her as a dog. I think better as, uh, as, as a girl, I think. I think. I think so. I, think I mean, so. you know what? She's made up anyway, so... It's, the point is moot. She's what? She's made up. She's, she's oh, yeah, yeah makeup. Boring. Yes, beautiful. Lovely. No, 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 oh, yeah. not, no. I'm just saying she's not a real lady. <laughs> <laughs> Dom. Hello. <laughs> Dom, welcome back to Pointless. Thank you very uh, much. Great to have you back here. Now, before you and Dick worked together, you were a magician. I was, I still am, really. And an escapologist. I, I just, um, yeah, I studied escapology, studied uh, the great Harry Houdini for years. Yeah. Um, but I did do a lot of work for the Magic Circle, but then I got thrown out of the Magic Circle. No, you, right, how? Because there was a Saturday morning show that we both did called Dick and Dom in the Bungalow. Yeah. It was a very naughty show, and I was very naughty, and I showed how to do a trick. <gasps> they didn't like it, and I was out. What happened? Were you summoned into the circle? Do you know, I actually was. They <gasps> actually said, if you come, come into the magic circle with your producer and apologise, we might consider letting you back in. So I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> do they ever allow people back in? They do, yeah. Yeah, you can go back in if you'd like to. And you, but you're not, you're not fussed. You I'm a little them. bit out of practice. My magic hands don't work as well anymore, so it's best for the magic world that I don't. That's gracious. That is gracious. Oh. I shall say that. Now, Dom, mm. our alliterative... People, yeah. I'm going to go for, because it is one of my all-time favourite movies, I'm going to go for Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Roger Rabbit. It's right. 65 is our high score, 55 is our low. And you passed both of them. Look at that. Ah, down to 37, Doc. OK. This is good. Roger Rabbit. I did a lot. A good answer. Very well played. Now, Charles Fleischer, who provides the voice of Roger Rabbit, recorded all of his lines in a rabbit suit because he wanted to be immersed into the character. So he acted alongside Bob Hoskins, who thought he was insane. I'm, uh, I think I'm on the Bob side of that, I think. Really? But you do Danger Mouse dressed in a, in a mouse dressed suit. In... No, those are my clothes. That's what I... <laughs> that's, that's why they cast you. That's what I... Oh, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You tend to do all your Danger Mouse um, Quite naked. stuff with uh, one leg caught under a big pin. And a piece of cheese just out of reach. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's me. Oh. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Kerry, welcome to Pointless. Lovely Hello. to have you here. Now, obviously, you, well, you said earlier, you, I mean, you're known to countless millions of children uh, for being the sort of a, a host on uh, CBBS. 
But I'd imagine you can't really, anywhere you go where children are, you can't really avoid them just flocking around you. No, I think it's the same for both of us, actually. Yeah, once once you work for CBBS, then you are known in every park, every coffee shop, anywhere that there's children and families, that's... But it's quite special. I mean, I don't know if there's any other area in television where you're loved quite so much. I mean, it's, a, you know, held in huge affection. The audience are very loyal and incredibly generous yeah. and, and very supportive, and it, it has been a really... Amazing journey, actually. I've been doing it, uh, yeah, over seven years now, and it's right. just, um, yes, there's a lot of love, and I feel in incredibly lucky and grateful. Wonderful. Uh, now, Kerry. Okay, back to this. Back yes. to this. Back to point. All right. Um, okay, I'm going to go for Fred Flintstone. Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Says Kerry, Fred <laughs> Flintstone. Let's see how many of our 100 people have said Fred Flintstone. Well, 65's the high score. Oh, oh I was about to say high score. Sorry, then. 81. Yes. That could have gone either way, couldn't it? It could, it could have. have. Mm. It could have. Yeah, it is a, it's a big score. Better than 100, but a big score. Um, thank you, Richard. So, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. 37, the best score of that pass. Very well done. Dom, Dom and Dick, I think you shall be in round two. Uh, then we go up to 55, where we find Sue and Richard. 65, where we find John and Sarah. 81, Kerry and Ben. Now, Ben. Hi. There's a lot in your hands here. You know what you have to do. <laughs> we must have a, a, a low score from you to see you into the next round. So very good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> ben, a very warm welcome to Pointless. Now, tell me about Mr Bloom. Mm. How did that come about and how did you get it made? Um, so it started out as a theatre show that I wrote. I think I was probably very broody. And uh, came up with a show about... Was it then vegetables. Mr Bloom's Nursery at that stage as well? Or was that just... No, so it was about a gardener with a lot of baby vegetables, which I stuck eyes on, wrapped up in nappies, and took them out to events and uh, got people to help me look after them. So then I toured that for a while and uh, then pitched it to CBeebies and it became Mr Bloom's Nursery. That's fantastic. And did it go to other territories as well? You, have you... Yeah. So, uh, yeah, all over Iran, uh, Europe, big in Iran. <laughs> well, Lots of vegetables there, so... Yeah. <laughs> you, you haven't done some foreign versions with, with, with vegetables that... Uh, with, with exotic vegetables, have you? No, well, there's a storyline, I guess, for, uh, like, an international fruit and veg exchange programme yeah. where you bring them over <laughs> from other climates. Yeah. They get to live in I'm Manchester. The, the durian fruit. I'm looking forward to that one when it comes <laughs> yeah. over. Uh, very good. Now, Ben, you're the high scorers. We need a low score from you. OK. Um, I'm going to go for the one which I, I wasn't sure if it's... Uh, Correct or not? So this is exactly the right sort of territory you should be in. Yeah, that's okay. It. This yeah. is it. Make a break. So I'll, I'll go for Woody Woodpecker. Woody Woodpecker, says Ben. Uh, no red line for you because you're the high scorers. Let's see how far down the column we get with Woody Woodpecker. It's oh, right. <laughs> Twenty-six for Woody Woodpecker. Very well done. The lowest score of the round so far. 107 is your total. You may have done enough to keep yourselves in. Yes, a very good answer. Well played. There he is in the, the bottom right. Stanley Kubrick's favourite cartoon character. Interesting. Uh, now, Dick. Oh, Hi, Dick, Tuck. welcome back. When I asked Dom earlier about his magic, he was saying, well, he still does it. I mean, do, do you do solo projects as well, or are you exclusively mm. working together? Pretty much exclusive these days. 20 years yes. now we've been together. No. Yeah. Yes. And do you... I know this is the question, but I ask this as somebody who's also been in a double act. Do you, do you get on very well all the time? Luckily, yes. 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 Yeah. I mean, it's like having a second wife, obviously. Yeah. If, if I go into a relationship, they have to realise that there's another person there. There's a third person. That's where's this going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Listen, where's this going? <laughs> At work. I edit, see. Edit I all see. of that out. There. Yeah. Ditch it. <laughs> but do you both? I mean, do you do you have a sort of fixed way of working together? Is one the the writer and the other one the pacer? No. Or well, you... one, one thing that we do do that not many people realise until it gets explained is that we always stand the same way round. Yes. Obviously, there's exceptions during this well, show. All double acts do that. Yeah. You know, even back in the day, Morgan Wise did the same way round. Ant and Dex stand the same way round. Laurel and Hardy. So, so that you can read it when you're watching at home. Dick Dob. So you know who's who. Mm -hmm. There we are. Yeah, the trade secret. Yeah, oh, trade secret. Oh, oh, now you're going to be thrown out of the comedian's circle as well. <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, Dick, you're yes. on 37. The high scorers are behind you. Ben and Kerry on 107. 69 or less keeps you in the game. OK. I think I'm going to go for the character on there that is a Skins character. 
a skinned character, and that is Big Bird. Big Bird. Big Bird. Here is your red line. If you can get below that with Big Bird, you are into round two. How many people said Big Bird? It's right. You are through. Oh, just look at that, 65. Oh. You needed 69, you got 65. Oh. That is what I call a common oh, 102 is your total. Well Very done. Very well played. Yeah, Big Bird is eight foot two tall. I call him normal size bird. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Richard? Okay. Richard, <laughs> welcome. Uh, Johnny Briggs, how old were you when you did Johnny Briggs? Um, started it when I was uh, 10 years old. <gasps> so for two years I did it. Well, so you were presumably out of school for quite a long time for that. Yeah, and I think it shows now, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. it doesn't. <laughs> Come now. So Come you had a tutor on set and all that sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. So we did, <sighs> um, yeah, in term time, I'd have to do a few hours. That must have just been like a dream. That must have been such good fun. Where did you film it? Uh, we filmed it down here, so I had to live away from Leeds whilst, yeah. I, was, whilst I was filming it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And uh, what do you do now, Richard? Um, I'm actually uh, working um, in the city now, working banking. And, do, and how many people come and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny Briggs? Oh, it's <laughs> the ears. Yeah, mainly about the ears that come up to me. About, yeah, not always about Johnny Briggs, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think because of the way they do the research these days, a lot of the time my manager will have... Uh, Googled me before uh, I start, so <laughs> sometimes I get a few nasty surprises on my first day at work, but, you know. <laughs> now, Richard, you are on 55. The high scorers are still Ben and Kerry on 107, so 51 or less is all you need. OK, um, I guess I'm going to go for um, Porky Pig. Porky Pig, mm. yeah. says Richard, here's your red line. If you get below that with Porky Pig, you're into round two. How many people said it? Porky Pig. It's right. And you've done it. Oh, just 49! Yeah. Just enough. Yeah. Beautiful grouping on the final scores there. 104, 102, 107. Lovely. It's getting very tense now, isn't, isn't it? it? Uh, yes, yeah, a very good answer, though. Very well played. He also appears in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Porky Pig. Thank you very much. Now, then, Sarah. Sarah, welcome to Pointless again. Thank you. Um, now, Lovely I read somewhere. Back. Yes. I just read somewhere that Richard Briers was the person who told you you should go and talk to Biddy Baxter about Blue Peter. Is that true? No, I'd already talked to Biddy, but well, she'd already talked to me. Oh, I, already... I was working in, a, in, um, in drama. I'd yeah. just done uh, one of those Sunday evening classic drama serials, costume drama, and um, they, uh, they said, well, would you come and audition for us? And I thought it would be worth it. In fact, the people I was sharing a flat with about seven different people mm. all said, bring us back a badge. That's all they wanted. <laughs> and my mum, who was an actress, was working with Richard Briers at the time. And he, typical actor, darling, if it's regular work, you've got to take it. And I thought, well, you know, that's not yeah, such a bad... Not such a bad A bad thing. mantra. So really? that, that's what I did. And um, a different adventure started. And then do you watch the sort of the, you know, having gone down that track, do you watch the... And keep the analogy going, the train's going down the other track and think, oh, I certainly wish I'd gone that way. Sometimes, Maybe I'd gone but that... actually mainly not, because no. everything, the trajectory that happened then, meeting people like John and, and, and being here now and, yeah. and meeting Mike and everything, that, that all happened because of the job that I yeah, did. Yeah, absolutely. So, real... So acting some, as well, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it's, it's probably <laughs> acting the hardest role you've ever done because oh, you're trying to be yourself. Well, exactly, I and mean, we're you know. acting all the time. This is not what we're like. At all. Oh, God, can it? you imagine if we were really good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we worked so hard to keep <laughs> our real selves off screen. Um, Sarah, uh, what yes. would you like to go for? That board what? is all yours. Do you want to walk us through it? Um, oh, dear. All right, this is really the short straw, isn't it? So let's try Roadrunner. OK, 41 is your target. 41 or less yeah. keeps you in the game. Mm. Let's see what 41 looks like. Here is your red line. There it is. If you can get below that with Roadrunner, you are through to round two. Oh! Oh! Oh, Sarah. She was Roadrunner. Oh, Sarah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that I'm scored you 100 too. points. This is the third time my partner has got 100. Yeah. Oh, I'm but sorry. Don't worry. Oh, I've scored yeah, you 100. I'm really sorry. It takes your total up to 165. I know. I don't I'm... think we're going to get past that. I think when it keeps happening, you've got to think maybe it's you, John. I think eventually, <laughs> maybe, maybe you're just a jinx. This is his third time this has happened. Oh, Lord, I think you're mixing up Woody Woodpecker with Roadrunner. You will not be the only person that did that. There's a, there are similarities uh, no, in the two no, of them. No, you're just saying that to try and make me feel better, and it's not working. I'm absolutely not. <laughs>
Now let's take a look through the ones that we have not had. Up the top, there's some big, big scorers here, as you'd expect. Uh, next to Betty Boop is Bugs Bunny for 89. Uh, the top right, Peter Pan. Peter Pan, 92. Good. Um, second row there next to uh, Porky Pig. Basil Brush. Basil Brush. Do you remember when we had Basil Brush I on the programme? I remember that <laughs> very well. <laughs> the two of you got on like uh, a house on fire, didn't you? <laughs> By which I mean we had to call the authorities. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 83 points for Basil Brush. Um, one of the best answers on the board next to Basil Brush. Principal Skinner, but then I was thinking, but that P.S. Seymour Skinner. Seymour Skinner yeah, is yeah. the right answer yeah. there. 20 points for that. Uh, the next row... SpongeBob. The brilliant SpongeBob SquarePants would have scored you 55. Next to Fred Flintstone. Pink Panther. Pink Panther. It's uh, another big score of 79. And bottom row, bottom left. That's Patrick Clifton, our friend. That is Postman Patrick Pat. Clifton, known as Postman Pat. Yeah. Uh, 74 points next to him. Minnie Mouse. Minnie Mouse, 66. And from American Dad. Stan Smith. Stan Smith. Best answer on the board. That would have scored you eight. So very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So we are at the end of our first round, and I, I'm so sorry. It pains me to say goodbye <laughs> to you, Sarah me too. and John. It pains me to say goodbye to it's you. It's such a treat having you here. And it pains me for John because that's <laughs> just... I'm, I'm a bad can luck I, charm. Can Minnie. I spe can I send in a, somebody else to be with John because he shouldn't be knocked out? No, we'll just both come back next time and just and uh, and give an answer that's on the board, Sarah. That's the uh, <laughs> that I think would be the help, doesn't it? <laughs> the option. Shall I tell you what I was going to say? Tell I mean, me. I know this is going. We're going to. Is it I was rude? Gonna go, no, 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 no. It's secret squirrel. See, nobody... Do you remember Secret Squirrel, anybody? No. Shh! Secret Squirrel. Oh, never mind. And Morocco never mind. Mole. So I've got them coming out of my ears, but you not have. the right ones, sorry. No, not the right ones. All yeah. alliterative and wonderful. But anyway, just come back next time and maybe Secret Squirrel and Thingy Mole will be, uh, will be on. <laughs> uh, but it's Don't been give me lovely that. Lovely having you on. Thank you so much. Sarah and John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. And look at that! As if by magic, we're suddenly down to three pairs. And I oh, don't like to say this, but at the end of this round, we'll be down to two. So we have to say goodbye to another pair. I really don't know which pair it's going to be, because that was so close. Your scores, only five points between them. That's impressive grouping. Anyway, best of luck to all three pairs. It's going to be close again, I'm sure. Our category for round two this evening is singles. Singles. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Christmas number twos, Richard. Yeah, we all remember Christmas number ones, but we're going to give you the names now of six songs that were number two on Christmas Day. We need to tell us the artist who had a number two hit with these songs, please. Six on the first board, six on the second, 12 in all to have a go at home. Very best of luck. OK, so who are the artists who had hits with these Christmas number twos? And here they are. We've got Downtown, 1964. Christmas Time, Don't Let the Bells End, 2003. What Makes a Man, 2000. Jeepster, 1971. Heal the World, 1992. And Fairy Tale of New York, 1987. Let's have all of those again. Downtown, 1964. Christmas Time, Don't Let the Bells End, 2003. What Makes a Man, 2000. Jeepster, 1971. Heal the World, 1992. And Fairy Tale of New York, 1987. There we are, Sue. Um, right, I've got to pick. I'm not very good at this, really. I'll have to go, and it's probably really high. Petula Clark, downtown. Petula Clark, says Sue, for downtown. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Petula Clark. It's right. Not bad, 44. Not bad at all, Sue. Kept off the number one slot by I Feel Fine by the Beatles. It's now used as a theme tune to uh, Downtown Abbey. <laughs> uh, thanks very much indeed. Uh, now, Dick. Dick, what would you like to go for on that board? They were a good band, and I think this might have been their only hit. One of. No, there might have been two. But I know this anyway, so I'm going to go for the second one down, which is The Darkness. The Darkness, says Dick. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for The Darkness. It's absolutely right. 44 is our only score on the board at this stage, and you pass it. <laughs> Substantially, yeah. down to 14. Very well done indeed, Dick. Good boy. 
that was kept off number one by Mad World. They had quite a few hits, uh, The Darkness. In 2007, Justin Hawkins, their singer, tried to represent the UK in the Eurovision Song Contest <laughs> and was beaten by Scooch. That's right. Ooh. Thank you, Richard. Uh, now then, Ben, um, what would you like? This is your board. If you want to go through it all, Ben, and fill in all the answers, you'd be most welcome, and then select the one you want to submit. That'd be great. OK, I'll go for um, what I think is correct. It may very well not be, but uh, 1992, Heal the World, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, says Ben, for Heal the World. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Michael Jackson. It is Michael Jackson. 44 is the high score, and we pass it. 14 is the low, you don't quite get there, but 22 is very respectable indeed. 22 for Michael Jackson. Very well played. Kept off number one by I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston. It's very similar to We Are The World, which Michael Jackson also wrote. Mm. But, you know, it's his song, he's allowed to do that, yeah. isn't he? He auto-plagiarised. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, fairy Tale of New York, uh, famously a Christmas number two, always on my mind, kept it off um, the number one spot, and it was by... The Pogues yeah, and Kirsty McCall. The Pogues and Kirsty McCall. That would have scored you 59. Uh, Jeepster is T-Rex. T -Rex, yeah. That would have scored you 24. And the best answer on the board, What Makes a Man, uh, is by Westlife. Would have scored you one point. Kept off number one by uh, Can We Fix It by Bob the Builder. The answer was, yes, he could. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. 14, Dick and Dom. Very well done, indeed. 22 is where we find Ben and Kerry. 44 is where we find Sue and Richard. So, Richard, a nice low score from you might keep you in the game. Sorry. So, best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, we're going to put six more songs up on the board, and here they come. Christmas number twos, all of them. I Have a Dream, 1979. Last Christmas, 1984. Morning Town Ride, 1966. Sacred Trust, 2002. Build Me Up, Buttercup, 1968. And All I Want for Christmas is You, 1994. I shall read those again. I Have a Dream, 1979. Last Christmas, 1984. Morning Town Ride, 1966. Sacred Trust, 2002. Build Me Up, Buttercup, 1968. And All I Want for Christmas is You. Kerry. Hi. You're on 22. I know. The high scorers are on 44, which means 21 or less. I only know one song on there, and I think everyone's going to know it, but I'm going to have to go for Mariah Carey, All I Want For Christmas Is You. Mariah Carey. OK, here is your red line. If you can get below that with Mariah Carey, you are definitely through. But let's see how far down the column you get with Mariah Carey. Oh. 39, not bad. Okay. Not, not bad. bad. 61 is your total. You might well have done enough there. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good score. Uh, it was number two to um, Stay Another Day by E17. There we are. Thank you, Richard. Um, OK, Dom. Dom, you're on 14. The high score is at the moment. Kerry and Ben behind you on 61. So 46 is your target. OK, so it's a toss-up between Last Christmas and I Have a Dream. I'm going to go for I Have a Dream by... ABBA. ABBA, says Dom. Now then, here is your red line. If you can possibly get below that with ABBA, you are into round three. Let's see how many of our 100 people said ABBA. You've done it. Look at that. Very well done indeed. 34. 34. Taking it all up to 48. Safely through. That was kept off number one by Pink Floyd, another brick in the wall. Now, we, all, we, we know what, ever, what all of our 100 people say whenever we ask them a question, so we know that ABBA scored 34. Do you know what one of our 100 gave us the answer to that? Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King is exactly <laughs> right. So. I'm yeah. sure we'd have remembered. If he'd released it as a single, I'm sure we'd have remembered. Yeah, in 1979, yeah. yeah, I think we would. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, mm. Richard, we have a target for you, which is 16. 16 or less. Right. Would you like okay. to talk us through the board and fill in the blanks? Well, I think Wham will ask Christmas. I've no idea who did Morning Sam Ride or Sacred Trust, if I'm honest. Um, I think Build Me Up Buttercup is the Foundations. I'm not 100% sure, but let's go for that. You said the Foundations, and just after you said it, almost inaudible, except to Richard and me and some dogs, was the little buzz from the audience there. Just a little, a little sort of... Ooh. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. It means but it's wrong, doesn't it? it <laughs> or it means it means they like it, Richard. Um, anyway, there is your red line. You have to get below that with the foundations. Let's see how many of our one hundred people said foundations. It is the foundations. 
Our audience liked it. Oh, look, oh. Zedar oh. Holland. <laughs> Seven. The oh. foundation <laughs> takes your total up to 51. Look at this grouping again. Just three points between you. That's great work, Richard. Very well played. Great song as well. Mm. Uh, Build Me Up Buscut by the Foundations. If you don't know it, do look it up. Uh, it's an absolute cracker. Seven points for that. Now, um, everyone avoided last Christmas, which was Wham. It's a big scorer. Would have scored 58. Morningtown Ride is The Seekers. And that would have scored you 19 points. Now, Sacred Trust is an interesting one. Remember Girls Aloud? They were Christmas number one in, in that year. And they were formed on a show called Pop Stars The Rivals, where there was a rival boy band and a girl band. They had the Christmas number one, and the rival boy band had the Christmas number two. Uh, very well done. If you said this, this is show business for you all over, isn't it? It was one true voice was the answer. It's a pointless answer. So very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our second round, the pair who are heading home with their score of 61, nothing wrong with that score. Lovely low score. Just everyone else got slightly lower, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kerry and Ben, it's been a real joy having you here. Thank you so much for going to play. Come and play again. Yeah. Yeah. Nice Round from Dick and Dom, Sue and Richard. It's now time for our head to head. <laughs> well, congratulations, Dick and Dom, Sue and Richard. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. <laughs> and so we have the pleasing task of deciding who goes through to the final to play for that jackpot. And we do that by making you go head to head. But the difference is, you are now allowed to confer before you give your answers. You can chat before saying what you think the answer should be. It takes a bit of the pressure off, I think. First pair in this round to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Very, very best of luck. This is very exciting. Dick and Dom versus Johnny Briggs. And, oh, <laughs> and as if that weren't exciting enough, we must remember that the second question in this head-to-head uh, -head round is Richard's favourite ever pointless category. So True. much to look forward to. And also to. the fact that we are currently 50% Richard, which I think might be a record on pointless. <laughs> I think that's quite nice. <laughs> There we go. Well, best of luck to everyone. Richards as well. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. Here is your first question. And it concerns... Children's TV. Nice. What about that? Children's oh, TV, yeah. Richard. Yeah. yeah, about to show you five uh, clues now to facts about children's television. Just need the most obscure answer, please. OK, but rather than me going through those clues... <laughs> We've got someone far more exciting than that. We've got Sooty and Richard Cadell. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Sooty, welcome. It's so nice to be here, isn't it? Oh, really, it's lovely to see you. Oh. Who's that? I don't know. It's uh, Alexander Armstrong, <laughs> Sooty. What's that? He wants to Sorry, shake your man. hand, Alexander. OK, yes, you, of course you can. That's it. Oh, that's nice. It is very I think he's going to do something unpleasant, though. <laughs> <laughs> you save him out for, for later, I think. OK, that's... fair enough. <laughs> OK, so, Sooty, are you ready to read out the questions? Yeah, he's, he's got them all ready. Excellent. He's going to whisper them out, OK? Good, OK. So, ready? First of all, what is the name of the green Teletubby? The name of the member of the royal family that Sooty squirted with the water pistol in 1955... The feline who wears the purple waistcoat and hat, whose best friends call him TC. The name of the island that Thomas the Tank Engine lives on. And then Dick Dastardly's canine sidekick in Wacky Races. There we are. Thank you very much. What's that? What's that? You want to whisper to Alexander? Yeah. What's that? Oh, oh no, no. Oh, oh, oh that's. <laughs> oh, no, Sooty. No, no, Sooty, don't be a naughty boy. No, Sooty, oh, stop, no, no, no. stop it. Sooty, stop it. He's very naughty. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's right. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Sooty and Richard Thank Gidell. you, everybody. Ah. <laughs> uh. I. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, that went better than when you met Basil Brush. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Uh, there we are. Well, wasn't that fun? I'm going to read those questions for you again. Just, um, I, I, what I will actually do is read them myself rather than whisper them to Richard. <laughs> um, the name of the green Teletubby, member of the royal family whom Sooty sprayed with a water gun in 1955, the feline in a purple waistcoat and hat known to his friends as TC, name of the island where Thomas the Tank Engine lives and Dick Dastardly's canine sidekick in Wacky Races. There we go. Dick and Dom, you're our low scorer, so you will go first. Oh. Ah. I reckon that we should go for... I think go for that one. What, the Thomas the Tank Engine one? Yeah. 
The Teletubby, you see, though, not many people will remember. Well, it, no, because it had its. Teletubby. It was massive back in the late 90s, wasn't so it? So it's Thomas the Tank Engine. And it went away and it's come back again. Ah, but you see, the thing is, Teletubbies had the theme tune attached to it with the name of that Teletubby, isn't yes, it? Yeah, that's a good point. Good, very good point. So people might remember. Like, how that. often in Thomas the Tank Engine do they mention the island? The opening of every single show. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to go for. Should we toss a coin? I'm Dipsy. Not, I haven't got any coins. Can OK, you you're going to go for Dipsy. Yeah. OK, Sue yeah. and Richard, talk us through the board. You can now do all your talking out loud. Well, we think the third one would be Top Cat. Don't know Thomas the Tank Engine no. where he lived. OK, yeah. yeah, we'll go for Muttley, Dick Dastard's Lee's sidekick. Muttley. OK, so we have Dipsy and we have Muttley. Dick and Dom went for Dipsy for the green Teletubby. Let's see how many people said that. Twenty-two for Dipsy. Twenty-two for Dipsy. Now, Sue and Richard have gone for Muttley for Dastardly's sidekick. Let's see how many people said Muttley. It's right. Ooh, oh. 69 for Muttley. Very well done indeed, Dick and Dom. After one question, you're up 1-0. Uh, well played. I know you were debating whether to go for that or to go for Island of Sodor, so let's see who won the Battle of Dick and Dom. Uh, Island of Sodor, if you said it, would have scored 25 points. Ooh, so nice. you are right with Dipsy. The feline in the purple waistcoat, you're quite right, is Top Cat. It's a huge score, 91 points for that. And who's the member of the royal family you should probably not shoot with a water pistol? Prince Philip. Prince Philip is the right answer. Ooh. Four points for that. I bet he took it about as well as you. <laughs> <laughs> One of the slightly odder... <laughs> <laughs> of my life, and I'd you've say. had some odd ones, right? Yeah, and I've had some odd ones. Um, but lovely. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sue and Richard, uh, you have to win this next point, but you get to go first, so you have a slight advantage here, okay. so best of luck. Um, our second question concerns least intelligent dogs. <laughs> <laughs> least intelligent dogs. Yeah, in Stanley Coren's book, The Intelligence of Dogs, he ranks dogs in order of their intelligence. And we picked five breeds of dogs from the bottom ten of his lists. And uh, we're going to show you pictures of them now, plus their initials. Can you name the breeds? Um, OK, let's reveal our five dogs, and here they come. Oh. A. B. C. D and E. Um, OK, now, uh, Sue and Richard, you will go first. So, we know a couple, and we don't know if it's clever or not, but we're going to go for <laughs> Afghan Hound. Afghan Hound, you yeah. see. Afghan Hound, say Sue and Richard. Now then, Dick and Dom, talk us through the dogs. We know that A is, I'm pretty sure it's the same word twice. Chuck, chuck. Uh, chop, chop. <laughs> chow, chow. <laughs> chow, chow, yeah. Chow, 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 chow. chow. Could be a chow, chow. Could, Could be a Should we go Mastiff? Mastiff. Mastiff. M-A-S-T-I-F-E. But aren't Mastiffs called bull Mastiffs? Well, so it might be a different you know, breed of it. I don't know. Let's do it. Mastiff, E. Do you think okay. so? OK, yeah. E, Done Mastiff, it. say oh. Dick and Dom. Mastiffs, you have Afghan Hound versus Mastiff. Oh, no. <sighs> uh, Sue and Rich have gone for Afghan Hound for C. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Afghan Hound. It is an Afghan Hound. Ooh. 66. Still good. Now, Dick and Dom have taken a bit of a gamble here, and you've gone for Mastiff for E because it fits the letters. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! That's it. Maybe it doesn't have any. Well, on the I don't end. know. Mastiff. Let's find out. Is it a Mastiff? Oh, no. Mastiff. Ah. It is a oh. Mastiff! Yes! And it wins you the points! Yes. 45, very well done indeed. And. Moreover, Dick and Don, it means after two questions you are straight through to the final 2-0. Uh, yeah, very well done and well done for taking the risk. Exactly the right thing to do. Do you know what? If you'd taken an even weirder risk, uh, you'd have been right with Chow Chow as well. Oh, That's no the right way. answer. Would have scored you 29 points. There. So cute. B is a bulldog. Uh, no point going for it because it would have scored a lot more than Afghan Hound. 
84. And D is the best answer on the board. That is a Basenji. Basenji, very well done if you said that. Five points. Now, the Basenji looks very intelligent. Doesn't it? It's yeah. very well. At the moment, it looks like it's looking... It looks like it's in a gallery looking at a Picasso retrospective. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so, the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. I'm so sorry, Sue and Richard, it is you. It's been what a is? real pleasure having oh, you here. You've been, been absolutely lovely. fantastic. Thanks for having us. Uh, please come back and play again. But wonderful, wonderful to have you here. Sue and Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Dick and Dom, it's now time for our pointless final. <laughs> Congratulations, Dick and Dom. You have seen off all the competition and you have won our yes. coveted pointless trophy. This really is pointless. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, you now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. There we are. <laughs> that is money you could be taking home for your charities. Uh, now, as always, you get to choose your category from the four that we've put up on the board. We just have to hope there's something you quite like the look of up there. Let's see what today's selection looks like. We have got... Russia, Strictly Come Dancing, Men's Grand Slam Tennis, the Land of Oz. Go for it. It's good. The Land of Oz is a good one, though, isn't it? Yeah, but that could be... Could be, um... Could be what? Wizard of Oz, could be Wicked. Could be Australia, though. Oh, it could be okay. Australia! Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> Strictly Come Dancing, it is. <laughs> OK, very best of luck. If you know you're Strictly, uh, there's some uh, nice answers up here. We're looking for any Strictly contestant since the first series uh, all the way through to the 2015 series. The regular series, please. Any of the celebrities whose first names begin with an S, any of the celebrities whose first names begin with a C, or any of the celebrities whose first names begin with a D, SCD, rather nicely. Uh, so any of the uh, celebs on the regular series of Strictly Come Dancing uh, whose first names begin S, C or D. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot for your charities is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? No. No. <laughs> Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. So, right. D, Darren Goff. Darren Goff, Goff. He won. Right. OK, you can stick with... You can put them all in D, but anyway, let's try C. OK, so let's go uh, for C. Did, um, oh... Oh, no, my brain's just spinning. gone blank. This is terrible. Should Sheridan be? Smith hasn't done it, has she? No, 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 she has not. Um, uh, come on. OK, let's just go through the logic. Um, oh, my goodness, my friend. Sarah, Sally, Claire. I'm just going to give you names. Sally Claire, Gunnell. Catherine. Sally Gunnell. Sally Gunnell. Catherine. Yeah, so uh, Sally Catherine Gunnell. Tate. Uh, uh, Chris. Charlie. Chris. Oh, Chris. Chris, um, he won it. Um, Chris, the newsreader. Chris, Chris, yes, yes. Chris. Come on, you know. Chris. I know. Who does the sports? He won it. <laughs> Akabusi! <laughs> no, no, he didn't do it. No. Cheryl. Cheryl what? Come on. Cheryl Cole hasn't done it. Ten seconds left. Yes, oh, don't say ten seconds We've got left. one for D, we've got one for S. Or another S or another D. Charlie... This is bizarre. Charlie Hickson? Charlie... No. Um... Oh, my. This is the weirdest thing that's okay, ever happened. OK, that is your minute up. I now need your three answers. OK. One of them is Darren Goff. Darren Goff. Sally Gunnell. Sally Gunnell. And the C. Caroline, Charlotte, Caroline. Oh, 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 Caroline Flack. Caroline Flack? Yes! Caroline, Caroline Flack. Flack! And Caroline, Caroline Flack. Of those three, which is your best shot at oh, a pointless right. answer? Okay, um, the most pointless one I think will be Sally Gunnell. Sally Gunnell goes I, last. I Least likely so, to be pointless. Even though she was quite decent. Least, Least likely to be Darren Goff one, Caroline Flack one, Sally Gunnell didn't. Okay. Should we put Darren Goff in the first position? Yes. Um, yes. And Sally Gunnell at the last. Thanks and for then helping Caroline us. Flack in the middle. <laughs> yes. Good idea. Okay, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here we go. We've got. Darren Goff, Caroline Flack, Sally Gunnell. Well, three good answers there. Who knows if any of them are going to be pointless? But if one of them were to be pointless, it would win you a jackpot of £2,500 for your charities. What charities are you playing for? Dick, you first. Uh, I'm playing for the Alzheimer's Society in memory of my dear mum. And I am playing for My Loma UK in memory of my wonderful father-in-law. Very good. Two excellent charities there. Let us hope one of these answers wins that jackpot for your two charities. Darren Goff was your first answer, the one you thought was probably least likely to be pointless. <laughs> Only one of these has to be pointless for you to win the jackpot, so for £2,500, let's see how many people named Darren Goff as a Strictly contestant. <laughs> well, he's right. Let's see how far down the column we go with Darren Goff. 
If this takes us down to zero, of course, you leave with £2,500. Down it goes into no, single no, figures. No, yes, it no, does. No. Oh, seven. Oh. Seven for Darren Goff. That's a great score. Two more shots at today's jackpot. Now, Caroline Flat won't do it because I think it was quite recent and she was oh, yeah. a very popular winner yeah. with that, uh, yes. With that, um, dance, dance she did. Dance she did. Charleston. Um, it was a Charleston. I know that. OK, well, we know Charleston. everything now. Yeah. Uh, Caroline <laughs> Flack, uh, let's find out. It has to be pointless for you to win the jackpot for mm. £2,500. Let's see how many people said Caroline Flack. When it's right, Darren Goff took us all the way down to seven. Caroline Flack now takes us down through the 20s, into the teens, <laughs> into single figures. Down it goes, passes seven. Down it goes, still going down to two. <laughs> We we have gone from seven to two. I like the way this is going. Sally Gunnell was your final answer, the one you thought was the best shot at a pointless answer. Now, if there's any justice, this will come all the way down to zero and you will leave with £2,500 for your charities. Let's find out how many people said Sally Gunnell. Is she a pointless answer in this category of Strictly Come Dancing contestants? No! Oh, no! Oh, no! She never did it! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So I'm so sorry. I'm afraid you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £2,500. However, as it is a celebrity special and each of our celebrity pairs is playing for a charity, we're going to donate £500 to each celebrity pair to give to their charity. Good. So there we are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, though, for being such brilliant contestants. Wonderful, strong performance the whole way through. Great it's fun. been a real joy having you on. And, and you get to take you. home a pointless trophy. So Hooray! Well done. Well done, you. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. It's so interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, you've obviously watched the show and, you know, uh, year after year after year, on all of these lists of pointless answers, you're going to recognise names and you're going to go, of course, of course, of course. So yes. I apologise in advance. Let's take a look. We'll start with the S's. Yeah. You could have had Scott Maslin, Sid Owen, so Sophie Ellis-Bexter, a pointless answer, Sinetra Sarka. You also could have had Siobhan Hayes. So those are the uh, answers for S. Let's Good take a look Simon at Simon Webb wasn't one of them, Simon, I said that. Simon Webb scored one point. OK. Um, C's Chelsea Healy, a point to start. See Cherry Lungi, Christopher Parker, uh, Claire Sweeney, uh, Claire King, Colin Salmon, Craig Kelly. All of those were pointless answers. It was Chris Hollins was the guy you were thinking of, and uh, Chris Hollins would have scored you four points. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and now for the D's. Big names here as well. Dave Myers, one of the hairy bikers. Deborah Mead and a pointless answer. Dermot Gavin, Dom Littlewood. Uh, you also could have had Dan Lobb and Don Warrington. Very well done if you've got one of those at home. And I, I know that you know lots of those answers. It's so tricky in that 60 seconds. But you played brilliantly throughout. Thank you. But listen, Dick and Dom, it's been fabulous having you on the show. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being. Dick and Dom. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>